The market has left behind some unfinished business down at the lows of this overall move, suggesting some potential for more sell side activity to come. But we are getting a fairly rare and contrarian breath indication. Let's talk about that and more in today's episode of the Midweek Market Update. As always, check out the links listed down below in the description. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you've not already done so. And stay tuned until the end of today's show. I've got one additional trade idea to share with you that you won't want to miss. With that said, let's jump right into the charts. Taking a closer look at the SPY daily time Time frame chart, you can clearly see that the overall trend is down with our last lower high being set on the failed Friday gap up of last week. The reason that this is the last lower high in the overall sequence is because we just made a brand new lower low on the Tuesday intraday session. So ultimately, the market can afford a counter trend move to find another lower high in the sequence coming from the lower low as long as we remain underneath 430 in the SPY. Personally, I think that 428 will be more insightful. We'll talk about why on the hourly chart in just a second. But nonetheless, the context is still bearish here. If we look at the bar to bar move, we have an inside bar that formed on today's session. And once again, looking at the lows a little bit more carefully, they're fairly precise. And as we know, this is the improper end of the auction. Generally, we'd like to see some more excess at the lows of an overall move. Some things to point out though, are that we are coming into structural support at 42050. We have the lower bound of this week's expected move and the daily 200 SMA, a very classic and well-respected area of support in the higher time frame context. So overall, I'm not convinced that new money shorts at the bottom are a good idea for sustained downward pressure on the market. However, breaking and repairing the structural lows in here to put in decent excess, something that might look like this, and then a quick snap back up above, might be a little bit more playable. And we'll talk about that on the hourly chart in just a second as well. The last thing to point out about 420 is that if you recall the updated SCP summary of economic projections that Jerome Powell spoke about on the FOMC conference from way back over here on Wednesday of three weeks ago, it outlined, given the new median projection for the terminal rate of the Fed funds rate in 2024 at 5.1 from 4.6, right? We've talked about the math that outlined a repricing of the S&P down towards 4,200. And in the SPY, the equivalent would be 420. So we're basically home from that perspective at that target. We have structural support. We have the lower bound of the expected move and the daily 200 SMA. New money shorts, once again, down here because of all of that context, don't really make the most sense to me. Instead, what I would prefer to see, if we're going to look for continued shorts that really have stronger uh, outcomes to the downside, a stronger counter trend move for a weekly lower high. We might even flip into a daily uptrend. That's fine. But if we can find a stronger weekly lower high, that then opens the door for further downside. And that's not really what we're looking for into the end of this week. If we do see a quick flush to repair the structure down here, because again, there's lack of material excess. If we put in an excess low, we know that there's a massive battleground at 416.75, because that's where there's the potential for a monthly higher low. If we remember all the way back up through the timeframes, the monthly has, as we know, this big retest point right here. And that level that we want to pay attention to is 416.75. Just as a general reminder, we don't want to lose sight of the monthly possibly doing something like this. And once again, would that align with or contradict the potential for a stronger daily uptrend to maybe emerge to set a weekly lower high? If this fails on the monthly, now we're talking about stronger downside, right? So one step at a time, we have to think about this market sequentially. And as of right now, it would seem as though you do not want to be an aggressive new money short at the lows of this overall move, looking for a lot further downside. Here's the hourly time frame chart. This is important to talk about because we are technically back in an hourly downtrend with lower highs and the opportunity for a lower high here at 425. So once again, I'm not trying to pound the table that it's bullish. This is going back to highs. We're looking at, you know, new all time highs inbound. This is the ultimate low. That's not what I'm trying to say. But in the short term, you know, you can clearly see the case on the daily that new money shorts down here are not ideal to trade them for a quick scalp again to repair that structure. You can just see how precise those touches are. The lack of excess at the bottom of this overall move. The way I can see that unfolding is with a potential hourly lower high here to remain in this hourly downtrend. We look for shorts early on in tomorrow's session with tight risk reward entering as close as possible up here. Stop above retarget 422.50. When and if we get here, possibility for a quick intraday bounce and then a breakdown. That's where this is all eyes on. 2050 repairing this poor structure once again might look like a very aggressive flush to run all of the stops because you have to imagine if longs are stacked up in here it's a very obvious place to put your stop loss even if it's just underneath the daily 200 sma right if you've got a stop loss in this area it would not be all that surprising to see the market come down 
do something like this, sweep all of the stops, get all of the longs out of the market from here, hurt everybody, find the excess low around 416.75, the monthly higher low, and then look for something a bit more constructive in the upward direction. So that's if we move lower first. What if we move higher first? If we can take out 425, there's the potential for a very interesting pattern to emerge here. And that might look something like this. I know here comes all the pattern people, right? If we get something that looks like an inverted head and shoulders, off of our daily 200 SMA, could this be the potential for a stronger bottom? Maybe, I wouldn't be a fan of this unfinished, unfinished business at the lows, but it is a pattern that would play. Because technically what you have is anybody who shorted the breakdown from Tuesday on the Jolt's jobs report, right, is short and trapped down here at the lows. If you start to accept back within this prior range where the breakdown came from, those shorts start to get nervous. So again, breaking 425, something here, again, there's still the opportunity for a daily lower high up against 430. We're not talking about this market going to the moon. We're talking about a pullback here that then finds a higher low that starts to become a little bit more constructive. So overall, 425 early on in Thursday's session and maybe even into Friday's session is the largest pivot that you have to be concerned with on the hourly time frame chart for all the reasons that we've just discussed. But it gets better because, of course, we have confluence with our anchored view app. So the anchored view app from the bottom of this move and the top of this move right here, both confluence at that 425. If you recall on the daily chart, I said that 428 might offer some more insights first, that's because your anchored view app from the FOMC is going to be providing confluence at that particular level. And we also know that's where the failed move from the counter trend originally last Thursday consolidated above and into Friday, we broke down underneath ever since it's offered up lower highs and resistance. So 428 is a big learning point and 425 is a big learning point. If I had to give an edge to the market, I would probably be thinking about a lower high here on the hourly time frame chart. For all of our trend line friends, you could look at something that looks like this a rejection here back down towards these lows that seemingly might be a higher probability outcome but either way willing to keep an open mind around 425 let's take a look at some supporting evidence exhibit a is always the market internals if you're not familiar with this screen check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner for the most part you can see pure domination from the sellers on monday and tuesday in terms of volume flows each day individually breaching that negative 300 million mark and also net flows on the week thus far are sitting at negative 633 million remember that a classically strong read is positive or negative 500 million. So obviously, sellers kind of in the driver's seat over here. If we take a look at the advanced decline line, again, this really speaks for itself, even getting over correlated on the Tuesday session. And this is an important note, because we were over correlated on Tuesday, it means that there was no rotation between the sectors, which would allow for continuation of a downward move. So to see today's session back up here towards the zero line in the advanced decline line tells us that overall, the over correlation has been fixed. And if we take a look over here, when we get to the sectors, I'll make note of this again, what people rotated into seemingly was tech because that's quote unquote, I know this is twisted to say, is the safe haven asset as of right now, as ironic as that seems, right? So overall, the over correlated state has been corrected, pure domination from the sellers, obviously, in the cumulative builds, we're always looking at negative or positive 5000 breached it both times on Monday and Tuesday. Now I want to talk about today's internals out of the tick and the breath reads as well. If you look at how the market actually responded to today's price action, we have a set of single prints overhead over here. And ultimately, we failed to go lower earlier on in the session. So seemingly intraday, if the sellers were weak and unable to produce a bar to bar lower low, as we moved into the single prints on the first attempt, you would think that the buyers would have had the upper hand and were able to accelerate fast through those singles. It was simply not the case. And the internals also do not reflect any serious buy side activity. So I think if anything, the internals from today support a lack of confidence on the buy side and just a reaction to the over correlated state from Tuesday. We do not have new money buyers. We seemingly just have an oversold reaction, which is not indicative of a stronger bottom overall in the S&P. Market profile is always exhibit B. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. Overall, what's going on with the value areas and point of control here, you can clearly see this is today, this is the Tuesday breakdown, and here is Monday, when we really just put in that consolidation style move. So overall, value has been established lower. And even with today's move up through the single prints that we were just discussing over on the candlestick ES chart, you can see that the value area for the most part was actually underneath the single prints, right? We didn't get much price acceptance in this area and we do technically have a spike at the high of day. So the end of day rally, we can't really tell whether or not these prices are fair. So spike rules will be in play for tomorrow's open just to briefly go over spike rules. And then we'll talk about the poor lows at the bottom. Spike rules would tell us 
in relationship to this area into the end of day. If we open above, we're looking for the market to auction higher to try to find new sellers. If we open in the spike, we learn something when we breach the high of day or when we breach back down underneath the base of the spike. If we open under the spike, that would tell us that these prices are not deemed fair and we're looking for a rotation lower. Basically, these buyers get caught on the wrong side of the market. And overall, that kind of pairs nicely with the overall narrative that we just saw over on the market internals with a lack of confidence on the buy side even as we moved into the end of the day, the market internals were not doing anything impressive, right? In terms of the lows, clearly a very, very poor low on today's session, lack of material excess. And that speaks to the auction ending improperly at the bottom. Typically, you want to see an excess move at the bottom to determine that, okay, these prices are too low, buyers are responding, and we move back towards value. So repairing these lows, if we open underneath the spike, does not seem all that far-fetched. Also considering that value for the most part on today's session, maybe it's slightly overlapped to up, but I would consider overall from Monday's session, value has been definitively lower. Nobody seemingly wants to transact at these higher prices, and that does strike me as a bearish takeaway. So jumping back on over to the platform to evaluate the weekly performance of our sectors, as we talked about earlier, the XLK, the tech sector, leads the pack this week up 0.55%. And almost in a sick and twisted way, it's only because of the overcorrelation to the downside on Tuesday. If you're going to rotate into anything, tech is the only thing that's been holding up. Obviously, as we'll see, the TLT continues to get absolutely hammered. So bonds are not a safe haven asset as of right now. They're even offering a far more attractive yield than utilities. So utilities continue to get beat up cash is flowing out of utilities into something like the TLT at this point, which would speak to volatility and the uncertainty or the lack of risk appetite to find yield in the equities market overall, right? The quote unquote risk free rate right now is going to surpass the yield of utilities. It already has. So overall, that's what I'm seeing from a distribution point of view. Let's take a look at the structural charts though, and see what's going on from that perspective. Obviously your XLK, the heaviest weight risk on style sector, although it's outperforming on the week, is there not the opportunity for a lower high to remain underneath 166.50? it's certainly possible. You're probably making the argument in your head, so we'll address it. Is there the possibility for an inverted head and shoulders? The answer is yes, but you can still produce, even if you break that uh, neckline here, you can produce a weekly lower high up against the back test of your daily 50 SMA, produce something in here around 170.25. So we're not out of the woods yet, especially breaking down to a new lower low over here from this perspective. So I would not say that this is an overly bullish indication just yet, and the overall breakdown is still very much so in force. If we do take out 166, 650 into the end of this week, it would help the case for the SPY also trying to produce your inverted head and shoulders we were discussing on the hourly. So watching 166.50 actually in the XLK is probably a top priority into the end of this week to determine whether or not we'll trade for upside or downside. XLY, consumer discretionary is up next. What do we see over here? We did not make a new lower low. That is interesting. However, all of the price action based on Friday's last lower high, the failed gap up, right, is underneath the overhead supply. So is it really bullish? The answer is no. If we are going to get something more constructive, there's, you know, the pattern for all the pattern folks, you've got to take out the neckline of that double bottom. You need price acceptance over 163.25 if the XLY is going to become more constructive for the broad market as a whole. If we remain underneath 160, it's the most optimal for bears looking for consolidation from this perspective and then a breakdown to maybe close this gap and get towards your daily 200 SMA. So really not seeing anything all that exciting in some of these uh, heavier weight risk on style sectors. It's just just more so neutral with a bearish edge, to be honest with you. Here is the XLC sideways. If anything, this is the strongest of the bunch because it has not made a weekly lower low. It made a weekly equal low, and now it's just consolidating back in the midpoint, right? If we divide this into ranges one, two, and three, it's back in range number two. So not the worst thing I've ever seen over here in communications. Unfortunately, the tech sector is the one that needs to pull the weight in the upward direction. Here's the XLE falling off of a cliff on today's session down, or on today's session down 1.67% on the week, down 5 5.01%. No good. And obviously, XOM, ExxonMobil is the biggest culprit over here. Big fall off on that name particularly. So this, of course, is downward pressure for the broad market. But remember, it's a really lightweight sector. So to see this falling off, if the XLK is going to outperform, your broad market can probably hold up. XLU continues to be a bloodbath. We talked about the yield over in you know government risk-free uh, versus, obviously, utilities. XLRE, 
very sensitive to the interest rates and rates are just through the roof right now, obviously breaking to a new high on today's session. We'll talk about the TNX in just a moment. So it makes total sense that it's lower. This, of course, is a headwind for markets. XLF, also a big headwind for markets. This is worth spending some time on as one of the heavier weight risk on style sectors. Notice there's your weekly lower high. Look at the magnitude now with the breakdown earlier this week after Friday's failed gap up, right? Monday's down to a new weekly lower low. Tuesday's down to a bigger weekly lower low. Big, big bloodbath over here in the financial sector. This is not good for the broad market as a whole. Even on rally attempts at this point, you could get a weekly lower high anywhere up against 33.65. So I'm not seeing the path forward for the bulls in financials as a whole. Maybe gap fill reversal might be bullish in the short term to give us that counter trend move, but there's a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done if this ship is going to turn around and right itself. Further downside supports to start paying attention to would be around 31.65. We'll refine that level as we move into to uh, further videos. Let's take a look at the XLI, what's going on with industrials. Same concept. I, I mean, this is just 100% retracement. So new money shorts down here, not really, but is it helpful for the broad market? Clearly not. Even if we do go for a counter trend move, still very strong odds for a lower high on the weekly to be set. That's a headwind for our broad market. XLP, consumer staples, same thing. Everything's a bloodbath here. Is it possible that we find some oversold rallies? It's certainly possible. I mean, at this point, I, mean, I hate to be that guy, but it's the truth. You could technically find a weekly lower or high anywhere underneath 71. So you're talking about pretty substantial upside to get there in the first place. But unfortunately, the structure is not going to flip back to the bull's favor anytime soon. Let's take a look at healthcare also breaking to a new lower low. Uh, reason I would say that is here, obviously, on the week breaking to that new lower low. This is D for defensive. So I'm kind of interested to see because it's not that these are purely inside bars, but it's definitely a three day balance range. How do we resolve that balance, right? As, as we sort of get this defensive rotation, if the market does make a counter trend move, is it going to be led? by something like healthcare trying to break from this three-day balance. That would be an extremely interesting and more so risk-off posture type move that would inform sort of next decisions on the S&P. Do we set a lower high or do we look for a stronger reversal, right? Next up, last but certainly not least, XLB for the material sector, extremely lightweight. What do we see over here? A partial gap fill. So it begs the question, right? Why were the sellers unable to, uh, to fill the gap, especially with broad market momentum to the downside? We're just back in this as an overall range. So look below and fail would suggest that the target is the top at 79. Unfortunately, as we pointed out, this is an extremely lightweight sector. It's not going to be overly helpful for the market to move higher. Here's the sector ratio grid. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. Overall, I think that this speaks to a mixed bag, more so of a market in turmoil. If we look at the XLK, the heaviest weight risk on sector, it's certainly outperforming, but contrast that with a XLF falling off of a cliff, a more so neutral XLY, and the second heaviest weighted sector by market cap healthcare, which is technically D for defensive, it's over the 50 SMA. It's technically sideways. It's not really falling off of a cliff. It's not moving lower aggressively, that's for sure. This speaks to turmoil. The XLC continues to be the only strong name in terms of the ratio that has never faltered this entire time. And we could see that on the structural chart as well, not making the new weekly lower low. If you look at the XLU for utilities, relative weakness. I mean, talk about the turnaround there uh, of events. There was relative strength as we headed into the breakdown. And now it's like nobody wants the yield over there. So again, a market in turmoil is really more so what this suggests. There's no overly strong indication that risk on is coming back into this market with a strong vengeance. And that's really important to point out, because if you only look at a skewed ratio, like the XLK over the XLU, of course, with the relative weakness in utilities, it's going to look like this market is ready to go, ready to rock and roll, full-blown bull mode. But providing the context that we just did, obviously, that's not the case. Something that's a little bit more appropriate to look at in this situation is the XLY over the XLP staples versus discretionary. A little bit of outperformance suggesting that, again, maybe there's the possibility that the monthly higher low holds on the retest of this area here, 4,200 roughly in the S&P. But this is certainly not aggressively trending in the upward direction. And this is clearly much more so sideways than this period when the market was actually making a substantial advance. So overall, Overall, risk on is not the favored flavor at this point in time for the broad market. Let's take a brief look at the dollar and see what's going on over here. The one thing I want to point out is that the price action looks extremely inorganic to me. Uh, it's been a straight shot higher. Disregard the, the candles. We know that Thinkorswim has been having issues processing the dollar data, but obviously we're moving in a straight line here, and that does not happen often in the market. It's not to say that it's manipulated or anything like that, which to some degree, you know, we could go down that rabbit hole. We're not. But for the most part, there have been 
no pullbacks during this move. So as the dollar continues to rip to the upside, it's like, okay, when's the pullback going to come? It certainly doesn't seem like it's going to be anytime soon with this further consolidation over the top of the breakout range. And even if it does pull back, there's a very strong opportunity for the dollar to find a higher low and just continue on its merry way, furthering the pressure on equities down below. And we can get some confirming pieces of evidence if we take a look at the gold contract, obviously falling off of a cliff big time over here, making substantial new lower lows. And even better is something like silver. Remember that we were watching this lower high set building out as a descending triangle up against this area here. I mean, talk about an aggressive breakdown, finally getting some follow through on the Monday session. So overall metals are confirming that the dollar rally is substantial and real. And again, even if these rally, there's still a strong opportunity for lower highs to be produced, furthering, again, downside pressure on equities over here. What about the 10-year interest rates? We talked about this briefly when we were talking about financials and real estate, broke to a new higher high on the Tuesday session. So again, talking about rates higher for longer, from a technical point of view, this makes complete sense. Even if rates do pull back, even if the foot comes off the gas pedal just a little bit, strong opportunity, once again, from a technical perspective, that we find some sort of higher low, well above the trend line, well above the breakout point, something that does does this is very well acceptable. And once again, that aligns with what the Fed has been talking about with their higher for longer policy to really tackle inflation. So speaking of the Fed, let's take a look at the inverted ZT. What would this suggest with the jolts and now ADP non-farm that we got this morning? What would this suggest about the Fed's action? As of right now, it's still suggesting that a pause is still the preference from the Fed. Let's take a look at the tracker tool and see if this aligns with or disagrees with. And you can certainly see that even after today's, again, non-farm, ADPs, we actually have an uptick in the probabilities for a pause in the next meeting, right? If we take a look at the December timeframe, an uptick, a more substantial uptick for a pause in the December meeting. January is where we were really expecting the highest probability for some sort of hike, diminished odds for a hike, stronger odds for a pause, even starting to price in some sort of cut over here. I'm not suggesting that January will be the cut, but that's just what the market tracker is suggesting as of right now. Let's take a look at the probabilities tab. If you recall, we've talked about the, uh, excuse me, January read being up and over 40%, certainly not the case anymore. And you can primarily attribute this to what's going on over here with the ADP non-farm. So Jerome Powell constantly talks about the rebalancing. It's a polite way to say labor, you know, drying up basically. Uh, 89,000 on the ADP non-farm. Now contrast that with the 9.61 jolts job openings that we got on Tuesday. Who's lying? I think that we're going to learn a lot about this market on the Friday open. We will be live for the pre-market prep, hourly earnings, the true NFP, not the private sector, and then the unemployment rate as well, broken down into its cohorts. We'll, of course, expand upon those ideas in the weekend update video. But for now, these two things are sort of contrary to one another, not playing nicely with the overall fundamental narrative as of right now. It would make sense that seeing a high job openings number would mean that the market could move lower. That's Tuesday's breakdown explained, basically. And on today's session, seeing a tighter labor markets like, okay, head scratcher, right? So Friday, we will learn more and hopefully get some more clarity as to what's going on there. And maybe we can get, you know, sort of read between the lines of what Jerome Powell is maybe thinking about there. Let's go back on over to the platform and have a brief look through some risk appetite charts. TLT is up first. This is TLT ratio to our S&P 500. You can clearly see that we remain well underneath our resistance trend line. And we actually did make a new lower low over here. The TLT at some point, you've got to think that the short move in the TLT is going to come unwound. Again, we're not forecasting when this is going to happen, but if it does start to become unwound, you're going to expect a mother of all short squeezes over on the TLT bonds, and that could easily flip the rotation back into a more uh, restricted risk appetite for equities down below if TLT starts to make a move in the upward direction. So watching that closely, but as of right now, this would suggest if you're just looking purely at the ratio that we're good to go, risk appetite is still pretty good for equities down below. Let's get a little bit more specific though and look at some short and long dated bonds in relationship to one another. The concern here is that obviously they're all trending in the upward direction and all of them are pulling back from higher highs. This would speak to uncertainty in our market and that would be contrary to what we just, I was going to say counter, but contrary to our TLT analysis that we just performed. So overall, this speaks to uncertainty. And I think that this is a bit more of a clear picture if the TLT ratio is what we would call broken as of right now. Let's take a look at credit spreads because these are widening 
Credit spreads are widening and this, you know, they're finally in sync moving in the upward direction together. Remember that this one started to go early and then this one finally played catch up, making that new higher high you can see on the Tuesday session. So this would speak to decreased risk appetite. This would not be favorable for equities down below. The last thing to talk about, I guess it's not the last in the risk uh, appetite lineup, but the HYG needs to be discussed on something like a yearly time frame chart because we just broke to brand new lower lows, right? Look at the move here. I mean, not suggesting that we're going towards like, 3,800 S&P, but the directional vector is really what counts, right? Directionally lower, right? Big divergence from that perspective. We're not concerned with hourly divergences at this point in time. Quote unquote, smart money up top is not liking the risk appetite right now for equities down below, or at least, you know, corporate grade bonds. So with that said, let's take a look at the digital gold, because honestly, in a sort of a sick and twisted way, everybody who doubted Bitcoin is kind of, you know, taking the taking it on them, I guess, taking some heat, right? So Bitcoin is the only thing that has ultimately outperformed as this market has been drawn down, which is incredibly kind of ironic because at face value, right? Everybody was like, oh, it's not the store of value. Well, I guess to some degree, it ultimately is. We don't want to talk about, you know, this rotation, of course, we'll leave that be. But for the most part, right, as this broad market sort of pullback has unfolded, you can clearly see that Bitcoin has not nearly been affected to the same degree, which is fairly interesting. Let's get into our market breadth, though, and see what's going on from that perspective. No surprises here, breaking to a new lower low in new highs versus lows. So breath is deteriorating, which makes complete sense as the market is pulling back aggressively. Same thing with the SPX A200R making a new lower low. And this is the oversold contrarian indication I was talking about in the intro. This is the SPX A50R on a daily time frame chart, making a low right around 10%. So only 10% of companies in the S&P are trading over their 50 SMA at this point in time. And if we just rewind this out to let's go to like, I don't know, let's go way out. Let's go with max available and let's go to a weekly time frame chart. You can see that we don't get down here all that often. Over the last little bit, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven, eight, nine. 10 times in the last 10 years, let's just call it 10 times in the last 10 years, we've seen these types of reads and we do not stay down there long, right? It's not like we get down there and consolidate for weeks and weeks on end. Usually it's a short lived move and then we see a counter trend rotation. So once again, new money shorts at the bottom of this overall move in equities, not really favorable based on this indication alone. Again, one data point in the overall analysis, but something that is worth pointing out. Let's take a look at the RSP equal weight S&P. You can clearly see that we broke to a new lower low underneath 140, continuing to put down downward pressure on weighted equities. If we take a look at the Dow, this is less so about the divergence uh, because now they're playing nicely together, but more so about the failed breakout in industrials, right? Dow industrials breaking the top of this range only to fail back in after a lower high would suggest that, again, we're probably rotating to the bottom on a very classic look above and fail. So overall, if this becomes the target, you're talking about more headwinds for the market as a whole. That is the breath. Let's take a look at volatility and we'll jump on over to the QQQ. So VIX volatility, a little bit of a projection today up against that 2050 level, but please do not misunderstand this chart. I mean, we're well elevated over that 15 ceiling that we were starting to see early on in 2023 back here. So volatility is certainly in this market. You've obviously felt it if you've been trading, unless you live under some sort of rock. Let's take a look at the VIX. This is where things get interesting because clearly there is the rejection of that 103 level as well. If the VIX as a precursor is not going to get up and over 103, I would not be preparing yet for a volatility spike for capitulation up around 40. So VVIX is always going to be your precursor for under 103. We're not all the way there yet. Let's take a look at volatility futures. Last thing on the lineup. And you can see that we're closer to a backwardation. That would be the zero line if we were trading positive in this particular spread. Not the case as of right now, but certainly well off of the lows. Remember what, when the market's more comfortable, you're trending smoothly in the downward direction. This type of volatility, I think aligns beautifully with the overall uncertainty that we discussed in some of the risk appetite indications. So what what would this tell us for our S&P? I think that we need to stay nimble. I think that there's maybe the potential for bearish consolidation on the lows, sweeping the low, repairing that poor low, and then looking for a stronger weekly lower high to be set, not just looking for the market to fall off of a cliff. If the market was going to do that, it's very likely that the VIX would be up and over the 103 and the VIX would really be threatening more so of that capitulation look in the upward direction.
QQQ daily time frame chart is certainly in a downtrend with lower highs, but notice that we did not break to a new lower low on the Tuesday session of this week. We're also nowhere near the lower bound of this week's expected move, and never mind our daily 200 SMA, which is currently trading in the queues way down below at 331.50, give or take. So overall, some relative strength over on the tech side of the market, and this makes total sense based on what we were discussing earlier, how tech is, quote, the safe haven as of right now, as twisted as that seems to be. So on the daily time frame chart, this starts to feel much more so like a balance area with a very well-defined pivot right down the midpoint at 357. There's not much to really discuss here. The stronger daily move is out of the balance range in the upward direction over 361.50 or under the balance lows at 352 for a stronger breakdown. We're talking about 346.85 and 340.50 as potential downside targets. Remember that we do have thin structure underneath that 346.85. If I just quickly auto zoom this, you'll recall that that's primarily primarily where we start dealing with thin structure from our AI mania breakout, right? So that's the danger zone to the downside. But currently, again, in this as a balance range, it's not a threat yet, at least. Let's take a look at the hourly time frame chart. This will really sort of, again, show you that balance range. We have a set of very well-defined highs, very well-defined lows, and we're just trading ping pong back and forth in the midpoint. So this is your pivot at 357. If we're above, great. The bulls have made some progress because this is technically a daily higher low. This kicks off the opportunity for a stronger counter trend move. And I'm sure once again, all the pattern folks are saying, hey, look at the double bottom. That's absolutely right. If you take out 361.50, there is the potential for some sort of double bottom to ultimately unfold there. If we throw on the anchored view apps, which come from all the major pivots we were just talking about on the spiders, you'll also notice that on today's close, we pushed above the entirety of that cluster. So that does stack up as more so of a bullish data point as opposed to a bearish data point. So in the very short and immediate term, the QQQ, the NASDAQ side of the market is the stronger place to be looking for longs. If we take a look and, you know, you can see the targets obviously up and down gap fill overhead over 363 closes 364.75 upper bound of the expected move is a big time potential daily lower high at 367. We talked about downside on the daily time frame chart. If we look over at the market internals, it's the same story, but not as bad to the downside, right? If you look at the volume reads, we did not get any individual day that breached underneath negative 400 million. The reason behind that obviously is that there is no energy sector. There is no utility sector sector that's really weighing on the tech cohort. Today certainly had a stronger upside read comparatively to the S&P, way over correlated on the Tuesday session. The thing to rotate into was today tech. And obviously you see that the advanced decline line moved positive into the close. Same thing about the cumulative builds down below though. Strong sell side, strong sell side, lack of confidence on the buy side, even though this is where folks were rotating into. Overall, it wouldn't give me a warm and fuzzy feeling about looking for massive trend reversals. But overall, I would say at least into today, session, there is an over, I wouldn't call it overwhelming, but a slight edge, I would say, to the buyers being back in this, the overall upper bound of this range, as opposed to trading in the lower bound, right? If you're just thinking about this positionally, if you're a bear who executed down here looking for follow through to the downside, you're either underwater and not happy about it, or you've already stopped out, eliminating shorts from the market. If you're long from down here, you're certainly happy about this move. And if you're short from up here, you're now saying like, okay, we're at my break even point. Am I going to close out? Am I going to stop out of these positions up and over the high of the range at 361.50? So that's the primary dynamic to be thinking about. And once again, there's a minor bullish edge if we're above that pivot at 357. Let's take a very brief look back on the daily time frame chart as something like the SMH for our semis, because this is also going to be useful, right? This as a balance range, or you could call this overhead distribution, whatever you want to call it. You could call it head and shoulders. You could call it the very classic and TV branded man ray pattern. But for the most part, something interesting happens here. If we can hold on to this higher low at 143.40, notice that we have lows, potential for higher lows. I would not be overly bullish and aggressive in this zone, but if we do break up and over this set of highs at 147.25, that helps the bull case for the broad market as a whole. Obviously slipping back down underneath, we're back in bear territory looking for further downside across the market. Let's take a look at QQQE, which is the equal weight QQQ. And you'll notice that this is painting a little bit of a different picture, obviously with the lower low, unlike what we just saw in the SMH and unlike what we just saw in the weighted QQQ after some sort of lower high being set here. So is it possible that if we stay underneath 7450 roughly in the QQQE, there is the possibility for downside divergence, push pull from the weighted versus unweighted? Absolutely. So watching that dynamic, it would be helpful if the QQQE was above 7450 if you're trying to play the bull counter trend move 
over in the QQQ for something that breaks out of this range. So those are the primary levels that I would be concerned with. Let's take a look very quickly at the market profile for the NASDAQ, because what you'll notice here is that instead of a rejection of the value area in the spike, or excuse me, not spike, the single prints from the Tuesday breakdown, the QQQ, the NASDAQ actually put the point of control right in the midpoint of those single prints. So overall, better progress made in the upward direction. Lack of material excess at the lows. We do technically have a spike with three M period TPOs off the top. So same concepts apply. If we open above, we'll look for the market to auction higher. If we open inside, we learn something on the break of the high of day or underneath the base of the spike. And if we open under the spike, you know, it's kind of a rejection of these higher prices, expect some sort of balance and just look for classic, more uh, regular, quote unquote, if there's anything regular about the market, regular setups intraday. IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps is clearly in a very aggressive daily downtrend, producing lower highs and very, very obvious lower lows. Interestingly enough, this is hammer time. The analysis here is extremely simple. We have a prior area of incredibly important weekly support. And on today's session, we actually produced a hammer. So you've probably seen yellow zones. You've seen blue zones on the charts we present here at Trade Brigade. But have you ever seen an orange zone? The answer is probably no, because this is the first one we've really put on the screen. So what does this represent? It represents an oversold snapback if we can take out this orange zone in the upward direction. Look at how far extended we are through the lower bound of this week's expected move. The sellers continued to push it down at the very bottom of the overall move. And where were the buyers able to close prices back inside of the previous day's range? So if you're a seller who executed anywhere underneath the prior low of day, you are dead underwater. And if we can take out the high of today's session, I think we see a stronger snapback to potentially set the next daily lower high up against 174.75. So let's go to the hourly time frame chart again. There's really not much to discuss here other than if we can take out the orange zone, hammer time zone, we're looking for a move in the upward direction. That target overhead is going to be at 174.75. We're not even going to look at internals. Obviously, they're oversold. The tick is not as bad as what we saw over on the NICE today. And if we take a look at the market profile, this might be a little bit insightful just because of what's going on from the single print perspective. We did not interact with the single prints today, meaning that the door is open. The door is open on the Russell futures to make that aggressive push higher. You can see that the value area, although yes, some of it was overlapping to down for the most part, the point of control was actually higher on today's session. Value was towards the upper bound of today's individual profile. I think that this is ripe for an oversold move back in the upward direction, which could help the overall thesis that the broad market as a whole, if we just go back on over the charts here, if we can take out IWM, let's just call the top end of that balance there, or I should say range at 171.85. If we take that out to make this rotation back into this week's expected move for an oversold rally, that's going to be incredibly helpful if you're looking for some sort of counter trend in the S&P, but more importantly, just the NASDAQ as a whole, right? NASDAQ has the relative strength. If IWM wants to participate in the upside over 171.85, we are sort of, I don't want to say good to go because obviously there's always risk in the market, but that would certainly be a helpful bullish tailwind instead of a headwind. If you've made it to this point in tonight's analysis, let me know what your favorite part was down below in the comments section, and let's get started on Apple. Clearly, we are building out a three or maybe even four day balance underneath the overhead supply here, which makes our job extremely easy on the daily time frame chart. Things get interesting over 174 or underneath 170.50. If you're a scalper or if you operate on the intraday time frame, the midpoint of that balance range, which is right here at 172.50, is also an interesting inflection point. You would maintain more of a bullish edge looking for a break in higher low retest over 174 for longs if we can remain above the midpoint of the range. If we slip it and produce an intraday lower high, you could certainly trade towards the bottom of the range, but I would want to see the overall broad market participating in the downward direction if that's the forecasted path. The better shorts are just clearly underneath 170.50 to open the door through the thin structure to close the daily gap towards 167 and approach our daily 200 SMA. Here's Netflix. We're still on an hourly time frame chart, hourly time frame chart. This has not really been cooperating nicely. I mean, look at the volatility that we're talking about on Tuesday's morning session. If anything, this breakdown is starting to become more attractive, right? This has been reattempted in short proximity of time here after a massive failed move from the buyers, right? Ideally, if you're along in that volatility, you wanted to see a higher low over the top of this prior area of resistance. That was not the case. As a matter of fact, we actually produced a lower high overall underneath 379 on today's session. So if we're consolidating down here, shorts are favorable underneath this breakdown point at 373.25, daily 200 
SMA is underneath us, but the structural target is at 365.75. Stronger longs need some sort of evidence proof that if this is truly going to be a double bottom, you need the higher low over 379 if you're even going to attempt to trade this in the upward direction. Let's go to Tesla. What's going on with Mr. Musk's rocket ship over here? Certainly took out the top of this as a range. Really impressive move, honestly, on today's session coming from the bottom of that area and holding on to the 247. So what do we see going forward? Certainly an opportunity to pull back off of this area here at 260.65. If that is the case, your strong higher low is over the prior highs at 255. Looking for longs here for the higher low to be set, then continuation in the upward direction, ultimately poking into this as an overhead range. Here it is on the daily time frame chart. We're talking about a pullback off of this inflection point, which is not unreasonable, right? Something that does this and then this, if we're going to become more constructive on Tesla as a whole. If you're still skeptical about Tesla, you're probably waiting for the higher low to be set back inside of this as an overhead range. So you would want to be active here over 260.65. Next up is Google. What's going on with Google continuing a slow grind in the upward direction? It's a day up, day down, day up, day down, so on and so forth. But we did have an inside day breakout to the upside on today's session. Here it is on the hourly time frame chart, breaching these highs and consolidating beautifully into the end of the day. The trade setup here is very straightforward. If we're above 134.25, looking for further bull flag consolidation above the top of the prior range from back over here. And continuation brings us to the strong Longer retest around 136.75. Falling back down underneath 134.25 is only as short as this has the potential to turn into like a 15 minute double top, right? If we get a 15 minute lower high back within this range, the target, of course, is the bottom at 132.25. Again, to trade that short here, I would want participation from the broad market in the downward direction. Metaverse, are we playing nicely in the sandbox with our friends? We are. We did put in a decent excess low underneath the picture perfect to picture perfect, as a matter of fact, lows that were stacked up. In into the end of day on Tuesday. That is just almost unbelievable. So the gap down fixes that. We put in excess and now we're back up towards the top of the range. Considering that we gapped underneath this as bear flag consolidation range, this I'm sure had everybody and their sister thinking about a breakdown here because we gapped down and then closed back up towards the highs. I think that any shorts from in here are getting... If they haven't squeezed already, they will squeeze definitively up and over 306. So watching 306 for upside, once again, you can hopefully see that we're talking about bullish setups primarily in tech, whereas in the S&P, we're a little bit more neutral, maybe even with a bearish edge. So if you want to talk about why tech is the safe haven, it's simply because it's the only thing that's performing right now and seeing decent updates. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. What's going on with NVIDIA? Uh, clear range, clear breakout point up and over 440 starts to squeeze out any of the shorts who are positioned down here after failing to set a daily lower high up against this level here at 432. There's the possibility that this is one at 445, but I'm not convinced until you get a break back down underneath 432 that this will stick. I think if anything, you have over, you know, overly aggressive longs who traded this entire move higher, profit taking. Now there's the possibility for a higher low here at 432. So if we can take this out, I think the trade is for upside. Even if it's just a scalp for five points tomorrow, up and over 440, 445 gets interesting. Then you can take it from there with the levels mapped out on the screen. Next up, we've got Microsoft. What's going on with Softy? This is probably a cleaner daily double bottom. Let's go daily chart. So there you go. If that's going to be your double bottom, the level is very well defined over 319.75, daily 50 SMA, and this as a zone overhead starts to come into sights as a target. 326.75 is that level. Back down to the hourly. What can we say about this? I would definitively want to wait for the higher low above, right? So if, in terms of ranking things, you probably want a little bit more confirmation out of Microsoft than maybe something like your Tesla higher low pullback or even your meta breakout, right? So that would be my first thought around 319.75. Can we pull back? Can we get a higher low there? And if so, that would be where I finally start to trust this move. I would not be overly aggressive on the initial break uh, just because of the daily overall downtrend well underneath the 50 SMA and certainly this offering some resi uh, resistance rejections early on the break, right? So you have limited overhead as opposed to doing something like this, your risk reward is far superior, right? And then looking for that overhead. Next up, last but certainly not least, Amazon, the mini beast, before moving into our one honorable mention. Can you guess what it is? Amazon did nothing today. I'm honestly like flabbergasted by the price action here. This is an hourly time frame chart. It did absolutely nothing all day. A couple of large upper wicks, but into the end of day, rallying a little bit, if you even want to classify it as that. I would say there's not much to do in Amazon until we get up closer to 129.15 probably looking for something, some sort of a pullback first if the broad market remains weak. Again, just like what we saw on Microsoft, if you
you are going to be constructive here. Higher low above is maybe interesting, but first thought would be for the pullback, right? And if we move to the bottom, depending on what the broad market is doing, if the broad market's holding up, I would look for support and just to remain neutral in this as an overall range. So not much really going on with Amazon. That one falls back to the back burners. Last but certainly not least is the additional trade idea, and it's AM Dizzle. Can you believe it? It's an honorable mention once again. We actually talked about it in the pre-market live stream this morning. Had some interesting uh, conversations about this level here at $100.50. And you can clearly see if I just zoom this out a little bit, there's that resistance trend line, right? So high rejection, rejection, rejection. I mean, you can only knock on the door so many times before someone opens up. And more importantly, we also have a horizontal level with confluence there around 104.65. If we can take that out, daily 50 SMA, yes, but structurally, we're looking at a next target around 108.70. Let's go down to the hourly time frame chart. Here it is. So you want to talk about there's a balance range, there's a break out of it, higher low produced above and back above prior support, which was clearly gapped through to the violation on the downside. So higher low here gets very interesting as we're approaching that trend line once again, and over that horizontal level, look left, there's not a whole lot of structure over here. It was a big breakdown. So if we can take that out, that overall intended upper target at 108.70 is looking fairly attractive. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the Midweek Market Update. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, let me know down below in the comments section or by giving the video a simple thumbs up. As always, we will be live at 8.15 tomorrow morning Eastern time for our pre-market prep. Come hang out with us up in the penthouse. And with that said, I wish you a green trading week.